It's amazing to see you today. A lot of women here to support women. It's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> I just want to say, like, it took five years to get Wajda off the ground, and it is, it is a very personal project because it is about my hometown where I grew up and all that, but um, it is also about embracing the ideas that makes us move away from intolerance, makes us embrace what is good in us, hard work, accepting others, and love, and that is what art should do, break all the barriers between religions and cultures and make us understand how we respect each other and love each other and be kind to each other. So <laughs> thanks again for coming today. That's why we said, okay, we're going to try to shoot the film in Saudi Arabia. No one has ever done this before. Um, but we spoke to people and asked them, do you think this is possible? And the answer was yes. And then we thought, well, why don't we try it that way? It might not be the easiest thing to do, but making films is not always about choosing the easy way, but perhaps the most challenging and the most exciting to shoot a, a feature film in a country where cinemas are not allowed. إضافة إلى ذلك السكريبت يتحدث عن مدينة زي مدينة الرياض زي الحواري القديمة في الرياض فيعني يعني حبيت أن يكون فعلا طبيعي حتى في مواقع التصوير الرياض كانت أنسب مدينة للتصوير Can you translate? Uh, of course, you know, with the rules in Saudi that women and men cannot really be together in public, cannot work together in public. Um, it, of course, poses certain challenges in the production and you have to respect also uh, local rules and customs and traditions. All right. طبعا في تحديات فنية كثيرة جدا أنا درست وسويت ماستر في فيلم ستاديز فيعني أخذت تدريب نظري نوعا ما لكن نظرت في السعودية ما عندك مكان ما في فيلم تشتغل عليه مع واحد زميل لك أو شيء زي كذا فيلم فيلم حقيقي يعني مو أفلام قصيرة أو شيء فيلم إنك أنت تدرب مع ناس تعرفهم وتروح تشوف إيش فدائما الخبرة العملية مفقودة تماما هذا شيء يعني أنا بالنسبة لي كان تحدي كبير إن أنا أحاول إن أنا أطور نفسي بشكل فردي من هذه الناحية وبعدين تحديات اللي تواجهني كاميرا طبعا كاميرا من السعودية دائما تلاقي إن الناس مهتمين إن يسمعون صوتك يبون يعرفون أشياء كثيرة لكن أيضا لما تكون امرأة تحاول إنك تصور في السعودية هذا شيء قصة أخرى يعني هذا شيء جميل لكن الشيء الثاني إنه إن مثلا أنت كنت معانا مثلا أحيانا في وقت التصوير ما كنت أقدر أطلع برا مع مع الممثلين هذا تحدي كبير انك ما تقدر تشوفهم شلون ما تقدر تعطيهم معلومات لازم توجههم من خلال توكي ووكي ولا توجههم من خلال مساعد المخرج وصعب احيانا السلام عليكم السلام المسؤول ما حد يجاوبنا طيب ما حد يجاوب هذا اللي يتحكم فيكم هو اللي يتحكم فيكم عيب عليكم اللي ساعه يوقف احد جاء واحد يكلمني يقول طيب علمنا قال لي كذا وزاره الاعلام وزاره الداخليه وزاره كذا انت باين حق اصلا يا اخي انت ما سالتك ما سالتك انا ما سالتك خلاص I hope that gave a little bit of a flavor of the challenges of making this film. And in the few minutes that we have, I think um, we want to explore a little bit more of the, about the film uh, itself, uh, a little bit more about Haifa, and then maybe uh, what the, the impact that the film has made. But for those who, just in a nutshell, uh, haven't seen the film, and by the way, just a plug, you can buy it on Amazon and um, see it at home, the full feature. But uh, it, it's a film about a, a girl in Saudi Arabia 
who wants to raise money for a bicycle in a society that sees a bicycle as a um, challenge to her virtues as, as a young girl and all that goes in, into that. So uh, really talking about a young girl who's seeking her own route and seeking her own route for empowerment. So maybe just start with why did you choose that as a subject and what was your inspiration for doing this film? I wrote the story about very much where I come from. I grew up in a small town in Saudi and I went exactly to the same school, the public schools and where the girl uh, went to in the film. And, um, but I come from a very, I come from very middle class, like normal family, not rich or anything. But my parents are very supportive and kind and, and they never um, compromised on my freedom. But whenever I go to school, I'm confronted with a different reality where I, I know exactly where I stand in the scheme of things. And I was really like that little the space at home allowed me to make films and to travel and to do things. But all the girls I went to school with, are they, these are my inspiration. Um, they had so much potential, but they never realized it because they never had the same support. And, they, and some of them are amazing girls. They could have changed the world if they gave them the chance. And that is for them to embrace um, who they are and, uh, and continue fight. It's not like in a political way, but as much as much embrace something um, they really love and continue fighting for who they are, really. In seeing this, I think it's hard not to be struck by the, both the cultural clashes <laughs> as well as how um, in some ways this making of this film brought two different cultures, probably even three different, multiple cultures together. Yeah. You yourself are now kind of a product of one foot in one world, one foot in another. Did you intend for this movie to also be something that in the actual making of it um, was a way of bringing people together. What did you learn about that, and how do you see that as, as maybe an important byproduct of this? Mm -hmm. Now, what you've seen here is the, the tip of the iceberg. My German <laughs> producers almost had a heart attack every day. <laughs> it is really difficult. But I think, um, for me, I try to raise money for a film. Like, as a filmmaker, you write a script, and you try to find producers, you, you try to find money. And I went, in Saudi, in the Middle East in general, people do not believe in the story that much. They felt it's everyday life, there's no much conflict, there's, films from the Middle East are very loud and there's drama and it did not have that kind of a drama, so it did not have um, appeal to a lot of financiers in the Middle East. And then so I tried to find producers out of the region and especially in Europe because there's co-production and they're interested in voices um, and, and here in that region and, and, and I come across I started writing emails to every production company in the West that made, in Europe, that made the film in the Middle East. And my name is Haifa Masur. I'm a filmmaker from Saudi Arabia. And you know exactly where that email goes. <laughs> right to the trash. But Razor Film, and they're amazing. They did Paradise Now, Waltz with Bashir, amazing production company. They answered, and I could not believe, and I started jumping. And then they asked me for a synopsis, and I sent a synopsis, and then a treatment. And I and I sent the script to different uh, development places, including Sundance, and they've been amazing, like, in, in, um, in also pushing the film through development. And that is what it makes. Like, sometimes in the Middle East, we don't have this mentality. If someone tells us it's no, it's no. And we start complaining that we don't have cinemas and we don't know how to do. But it is, it is always there's a solution. If you really want to do something, there's always a solution. Maybe it's difficult and daunting and exhausting. It took five years to get money for the film. But there is a way, and we have to believe in that. And that is what we need, I think, in the Middle East, to change values and to embrace those values that it doesn't matter how the world around us sometimes is very, tells us something. We have to find what makes us as people happy and go for it. So why film? And, and what was your path to deciding that film was a way of addressing these issues? And how has that evolved for you? Why film? I, I started making films um, when I was working in Aramco and my previous boss is here as a female. I'm very proud <laughs> that she came today. But it is a very man's world. I used to go to meetings and it's really hard for me to assert myself as fresh out of college. And, and I felt sometimes I don't have a voice. And, um, 
And I wanted to make something just as a hobby, just to, as a therapy, just to go and do something that keeps me from thinking about work and keeps me thinking about how to promote myself and all that in that place. And I started making films and I went to festivals and I sent it to a random festival small in Abu Dhabi and they, they, they actually accepted the film and just like, and they said they would pay for my travels. It's like the first time ever someone's paying for a ticket and I went there. What was that, what was that film about? It was, it's called, it is very small and, all right. <laughs> it's called Who? It's about a serial killer who started killing um, women in, in, in Saudi wearing in the niqab and all the cover, like the, and for me to, to say, like, it was a rumor in the society at the time. And it, for us, sometimes, we're, we're really scared of things that we, we enforce. We have of the population in Saudi Arabia is unidentified because of that kind of face covering. And it doesn't have to do with the veil. It is more, it's, and it's alarming. Security-wise, it's very alarming. People recognize the power of film, of what film can do. And after that, there are a lot of um, young um, filmmakers in, in Saudi Arabia started making films. So what kind of impact do you think this film has had so far? Well, I try to make films in a way that I just want to entertain people. I maintain my voice as a, as a, as a woman as a, and, um, and as a person who wants to move beyond intolerance, move beyond everything I've been taught since I was little, and break through that, shape the consciousness of people and how they think and how they... Um, how they feel. And that is for me the biggest accomplishment if someone watched the film and just like in Saudi and went home and bought something for his daughter or understand the struggles little girls go through. And that ultimately will make us a better society, mm -hmm. will make us more kind and more accepting and, and relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that is my aim always in making films that to make something like this touching, empowering and, and it's hard because sometimes you don't know what is really works but I want to tell a story that touches people, and I know who, who my audience is. Very conservative, very tribal, very, very, they don't accept me as a person because I, I go and make films. So I try to make, to tell my, my stories in a way that is, that is still works within where I come from. People still are skeptical and still, but they are accepting, and it's very important to show respect to the conservatives, people who are different than me, I mean. It is, it is, they are who they are and I am who I am. And we start and we build bridges. And that is how I go. And I think there was no backlash um, uh, officially or anything. The, the film was nominated, nominated for the first time to the Oscars by Saudi. And that is, was big because it was very long a process to go through the official and to go to the Ministry of Culture and then go all the channels. And sometimes going through the system, especially in bureaucratic countries like where we come from, it's difficult, but if you keep working on making those um, systems a little bit bigger, you, you leave something for other people to come on, and it eventually is more effective and later on, and, and that is, you want change that is effective. You don't want to be the hero, and that's it. But the real hero, the person who takes everyday life and conquer it. For you, this isn't the end, this is the beginning, and yeah. I know you have another project in the work, just quickly give folks an idea of what you're doing next so we can all uh, be ready to support that too. Oh yeah, I have, I'm working on my first film in LA, in Hollywood, independent Hollywood, no studio or anything. It's about Mary Shelley's um, uh, life and how she, it's amazing when they send me the script and she, she made, she's the mother of Comic Con and she left this amazing legacy. But when I read her, her life, very similar to my life when I grew up in Saudi. She grew up in England when so it was very conservative and women were expected and act and be in a certain way. And I connected with her story right away. And after here, I'm going to Sundance to receive the Global Filmmaker Award. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give her. Unfortunately, we've got to close. This was too short a time, but I think this is a wonderful example of how art does open up the spaces for conversation that are sometimes difficult to do otherwise. Thanks again to Aifa for giving us this gift of your film.